Well, let's get to our topic of discussion now very quickly. The governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefele, says the newly inaugurated Dangote Petroleum Refinery and Petrochemicals will help generate power for its electricity sector. The Apex Bank governor said this while speaking at the inauguration of the refinery expected to generate 12,000 megawatts of electricity. Mr. Emefele further stated that over 135,000 permanent jobs would be available to Nigeria and, uh, uh, as the operations begin. The 650,000 per day Dangote refinery will be a significant landmark development in Nigeria's oil and gas uh, sector. Joining me to look at this from our Abuja studios and many more developments around this. Many say this is a game changer for the entire sector. I'm being joined by an economist, uh, Mr. Yushao Aliu. Thank you so much, Mr. Aliu. It's good to have you join the program. Thank you. Good afternoon and congratulations, Nigeria, for having the largest refinery. Great. Let's take it from there. 650,000 barrels per day. Uh, this, is, this can also uh, uh, take, make use of all specifications of crude oil. What does this mean for Nigeria? Situating this facility here, what to you are the positives? Uh, you see, Nigeria has been patient enough for over 10 years expecting this, this uh, giant stride from this conglomerate which, has, uh, uh, in, which is going to impact so much on the economic life of industrialization, economic life of the GDP, including economic life of the households. We are looking at the fact that there is going to be additional employment, which is going to be a reduction in our unemployment rate, and at the same time increase the electricity capacity, which will help to gender a lot of industry, especially those that are based around Lagos. I have been to Lekki, and I have understood that this refinery, being the largest single uh, uh, train uh, that is going to uh, uh, generate so much of business uh, activities, including uh, uh, businesses that are informal. But in general sense, it's a welcome development looking at the fact that uh, at least you, we have seen uh, uh, players from the West Africa sub-region, including Ghanaian president and other president, being there. It's a good development, and Nigeria is going to benefit more. And we are expecting Angwa to also not just to remain at Lekki, but also to expand the businesses in the, in the oil sector so that we will have stability in price. You have mentioned in your earlier report the central bank is doing its best to stabilize the Naira. We also need to stabilize the supply of PMS, AGO, kerosene, and other byproducts from this industry. Mm, interesting way to start. But you are an economist, and I would ask you this question. I'm a journalist. And I need to know more. Pricing is what everyone is talking about. And every, the, the experts have said this might not really bring down the price of PMS. But it might a bit help us address local consumption, maybe reduce fret, and some other things. What is your understanding of what this means with regards to pricing? Uh, well, be, before you go into pricing, you have to look at the cost implication of making the industry working. An industry that over 19 billion is spent over 10 years, and at, uh, at that same period, it has recorded a lot of challenges, including economic waste, which is in terms of loss. Uh, uh, but we can, uh, agree, we can agree that uh, there is going to be a little bit of stability in the supply. That is the first thing that the economy is looking for. But when you talk of the prices, it depends on the cost of production because the source of the product, the primary source, must be crude oil. And this crude oil, we are happy to, to, to have it around Lagos and including the, south, the, the, south, the, the, the oil production region of Nigeria, that is the south-south. So when we have this, the implication that we are expecting to bring down prices is that uh, cost of transporting refined product from, this, from, from, from far shores of Nigeria to Nigeria, it will be eliminated. Now, that, that elimination of cost of transporting that same product to Nigeria, if it is eliminated, we have a one factor that we assured that, that is assured that whoever is supplying this product from the Lagos axis to the Portakot axis, to the Sokoto axis, to the Madiguri axis, will try and maintain price that is equal to the production and equal to the transport locally. 
if this is attained, Nigerians will be more interested in having the supplies and also to have sustainable supply. Not the, not the fact that some people will take advantage of the absence of the supply and begin to change prices, that, because that is what is obtainable in most parts of Nigeria where this product is not uh, 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 supplied in, in, in good time. Mm. In, interesting stuff. Let's, let's talk about competition in the market. Uh, many say that this would open up competition, particularly in the downstream uh, space of the oil and gas industry. And the big question is deregulation is what many have been talking about. Do you see this as a good step for Nigeria to maybe open up this market and deregulate this market in totality? Uh, what is your take with regards to that? The, the, the market is already degraded, deregulated in the fact that we have a petroleum industry act at work. And this petroleum industry act, the advantage of coming of this industry now is the fact that is the, there is going to be competition. And when there is competition, there is normally what is called perfect competition. When you have perfect competition, it's a situation where all investors have equal rights. Equal right to invest, equal right to distribute, equal right also to make prizes. But in the, in, in the end, what we are expecting this market to behave, we are not expecting perfect monopoly. Now, Dongote is a single producer of, uh, of refined product. It's going to be the single producer for now. But we are expecting when government uh, flush out certain inconsistencies in our existing uh, refineries, is, is going to be offered to the market too, where investors will invest. After investing, they will be more efficient in trying to make production available and sustainable. Not only that, if Dangote is looking for a way to make these supplies round 24, round 300 degrees of Nigeria, we are expecting the same Dangote also to be looking for profit margin. Looking for profit margin, including uh, selling this product to neighboring countries where, he, where the company will have more advantage, especially if he is going to sell at an international price where they will be paid. But what we are in Expecting the short run. In the short run, we are expecting the federal government to make certain intervention to make this Angote to be able to attract the supply into the local economy that is fed. Second, also to have efficient arrangement with the independent marketers, whereby most of this product will be regulated and supplied at equal range. Equal range being the fact that if it is supplied at equal range, we are expecting the price in Lagos not to be the same price in Sokoto, but it will be relatively close to what all consumers will be buying because at the end, consumers always try to maximize their benefit. They want to have this product, that is the first thing. The availability of product will determine the consistency of having a, 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 an airmark price for the entire economy locally. Mm. You touched on the PIA, very interesting document. And the issue of subsidy would always come up when we talk about the PIA because removal of subsidy is one of the steps to totally deregulate the oil and gas sector. But considering the social and political uh, issues surrounding subsidy removal, as an economist, do you think that Nigeria can outrightly take out subsidy at this time? Or are you in support of phased removal of subsidy, considering the economic issues at the moment? Uh, uh, subsidies are counterproductive in all economies, especially to, the, to a major industry like this. And Angote will remain a blessing to Nigeria for even having the, initiat the initiative to go to international market, financial market, get funds, establish the largest strain of this industry in, 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 in Nigeria. That is the first advantage that now Nigeria is registered on the world map of having a, a very comprehensive, updated, and more, dis more, 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 more sophisticated refinery. That is different. But when you speak of subsidy, subsidy, like I said, is counterproductive. It's counterproductive and it's also uh, relate, uh, it's, it's relative to different economies. In Nigeria, from inception to date, since the petroleum equalization funds era, where bridging costs was put to determine prices, equality within the economy, we have seen a lot of corruptions. And these corruptions has continued to magnify. Recently, in 2023, uh, first six months, three, three trillion naira paid 
in the name of subsidy and with, with the scarcity, with the shortages, with the high pricing. If that exists in an economy where you have subsidy and you have scarcity and you have differentiated prices, we don't need subsidy. The only thing is for us to have an organized market. Nigerians are very educated, are very also release, resilient people to cope with uh, different situations. We would like this money that is put in subsidy to be, to be translated in economic sectors of the economy, especially the power generation. Nongote and Loan is about to produce 12,000 megawatts. Well, this is a giant strike. What of if we can modernize the Potakot refinery, the Wari refinery, and Kaduna refinery to make uh, a similar intervention? So in my own opinion, subsidy has to go. And if it is to go, government, we don't need government to go and borrow any funds anywhere to come as palliative because uh, we are expecting the economy to stop borrowing for consumption not or to borrow for interventions. What we are expecting is we, our taxes should be playing a greater role All right. in making uh, certain Liu, intervention Mr. and in Just making certain on. sector of economy. Yeah. Mr. Ali, you hold your thoughts. We'll go on this brief break, very short one, and we'll be back and continue this discussion. Don't go away. It's your... Thank you so much for staying with us. Mr. Yishao Ali is an economist making real sense of the uh, walkability, the prospect, issues surrounding the Dangote refinery and what we should expect as Nigerians. Yes, uh, before I interrupted you there, uh, you were making a point. Please, I'd like you to conclude on that as we move on with this discussion. It's like I'm saying, the subsidy regime in January 2023 to, to May, uh, today, the uh, government has spent over three trillion on subsidy. And this is the same period where Nigerians experience shortages of the same product, high pricing of the same product, and they are paying even higher. So, but with the coming of Anguity, we are expecting government to make light intervention, light in the, in the intervention in the sense that forced to have the supplies, and these supplies to be regulated, and if they are regulated, the, the same government, based on the Petroleum Industry Act, because the NNPC is being categorized, the upstream and the downstream, there is need to call investors locally, locally to sit with the new government. And after sitting with the new government, it is an opportunity for many sections of the economy, especially the South-South, to, to make an attempt. If, this, if the water refinery is being uh, put into... into into commercialization differently, but if it is put under privatization and the private companies are coming, they have to use the funds available to them to be efficient. Thank God Nongote has brought technical partners that are expert, expert in petroleum industry and refining capacity, and many countries are looking for the refined product, especially within the same sub-regime. Then it is important for Nigeria to, to, to desist from investing so much because there is there is no amount already stated being the consumption at level at which the government is paying subsidy. And even if it exists, the amount and the amount of resources being expended, looking at the appropriation of Nigeria of, of about 21 trillion, if you pay 3 trillion in six months and you pay another 3 trillion in the, in the subsequent six months, making 6 trillion, you are just wasting resources that ought to have been used to, to, to stop us from borrowing and to invest in our economic sectors that will have the growth of the GDP. Hmm. Interesting analysis uh, there. But before I let you go, let's touch on uh, this argument that many would say that government has no business in business. They should allow the private sector to fund it. Uh, I heard clearly uh, Mr. Femi Otodola yesterday saying that uh, at the time they wanted to invest so much in the refineries, but one thing or the other, they weren't given that opportunity. Today, see what Dangote has put on the ground. Everyone is commending him. Uh, do you think that we can open up other refineries the Portacot refinery is there. Well, 1.5 billion is already assigned for that for rehabilitation. But we have the Kaduna refinery. We still have other refineries that government can allow the private sector to take over. Are you in support of that? Yes, I'm in support of that partially. But my opinion on that, if government has discovered oil in Bauchi, that is Gongola Basin, 
and it has been launched by the same NNPC. What I'm expecting, I'm expecting, expecting a brand new refinery in that Bauchi axis because when you extract, you cannot transport for, you, it's not easy to transport that same product for, for, for international market, the crude oil. So we better have a good arrangement where we have existing refinery at the new discoveries. When we have this one, we are sure that if Dangote is producing from the extreme free, free, free trade area of Lekki, then there is going to be another good working refinery at the center of northern Nigeria, where you have large market for the northern Nigeria and other neighboring states like Niger and Benin and other uh, uh, economies. But however, those refineries, like I mentioned, the Portacot are fine, must be put to, to market. It's wrong to say that government has no business inside business. Government must organize. Government, after organizing, then call investors. After calling investors, then value the same investment with the highest bidding. And when you do that, the economy will be benefiting because any time new job is created, is an avenue for economic development of that same state. And I think also the Kaduna refinery is not, uh, from all indication, if the, the, this administration will spend seven years in an attempt to make it work, and it has never worked, based on certain factors, factors that include the technology base at which the refinery is being constructed, and also the technology base of the contract contracted companies to make it work. So there is a lot of confusion in maintaining and making these refineries to work because you have different technologies and you have different uh, uh, companies contracting to, to make them work. So there is need. Now that we have a very, very, very good refinery with a very, very good expert from India working tirelessly to make this dream come reality. Remember, like I said, since 2003, when Angote started to to, 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 to come into that limelight. Today, the conglomerate, the conglomerate has produced wonders, and it has shown that if Dangote Group, based on the performance in cement, based on the performance on other economic sectors, now they are going to perform. In the first, in the short run, first six months should be a yardstick to understand the capacity at which the supply will be eff efficient and effective. The two different things, efficiency and effectiveness. That is one. Second, the next investors that are coming. It should not be concentrated because nature of market is not perfectly monopolistic, but it is a, a, a hit around. So most investors are trying to come and reap benefit. After reaping benefit in the short run, in the long run, they diversify. So the diversification effort where you have a refinery is coming with a fertilizer unit, is coming with electricity generation, and is coming with even the silting of, of, of the environment. You now welcome that kind of development and also ad advise government to quickly call the right actors because where we are getting it wrong is when we decide to make investment and call, and call uh, parties that are not competent or they are not willing. Well, it's an interesting conversation, and I must thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Yishao uh, Aliu, economist. It's the first time on the show. We really do appreciate this. I uh, will surely reach out to you again to discuss uh, more issues around Nigeria's economy. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Remain grateful.